What's up? I'm B, and whether you're watching this on YouTube or you are listening to the podcast, I hope you are having an amazing day. Today, we are reacting to Brittany Dawn's most recent podcast episode that she has published with Jordan, and it is called Answering Your Questions, Social Media Hate, Trending on Fox News, Fertility Struggles, and Moving Soon. It's been a while since I've done a Brittany Dawn podcast reaction, and so I had quite a few options. She did recently uh, publish an episode with her girlies, um, you know, Fair and Emma Kelly, and then another girl. I think her name is... Kendall? Kristen. I don't know. She's interesting. She's she's an interesting character. I've looked into her a little bit and I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, I thought about reacting to that episode, but that's a lot of voices in one podcast. And so I think what I'm going to end up doing for that one is I'll go back and I'll listen to it and then um, I'll clip anything important. I'll write some notes and then maybe we can do a recap episode on that one because those always do give us a lot of um, points to talk about and discuss that I think are valuable. But I think doing a reaction to it would be just like a little bit too much. So that's my plan for that episode. And today we're going to be doing a reaction to the episode with her and Jordan. Before we get into that though, I want to do win for the week, and I also want to just say a huge thank you to everyone who is here. This is my last episode before the new year, and um, I'm just being a little bit reflective and like thinking about everything that's happened for the past year, and um, my channel has, has grown this year. There's been a lot more people watching my stuff and listening to the podcast, and I'm just really grateful. It means a lot, and um, like you, you could spend your time doing anything watching anything you want, listening to anybody's content, and the fact that there are so many of you who choose to listen to me and the things that I put out is astounding. Like every time I publish a video and it gets views or I put out a podcast episode and you're like responding to the q and I'm just like, wow, okay, this is really cool. Anyway, while I'm grateful all the time that you choose to share your time with me and Um, engage in the videos, leave comments, share your perspective, listen to the podcast. I got my Spotify wrapped and there's a lot of you who text out my episodes to somebody. I don't know if you're texting them to friends, family, whatever, but a lot of you are sharing the episodes in your text messages. And I I never even (laughs) thought about that. I never thought that somebody who listened to something I put out would be like, "This this is a cool thing or like, this is an interesting thing. I want somebody else to hear about it. Let me text it to them. Like, Humbled beyond humble. I, <laughs> it's very cool. Um, so I'm gonna move on because I'm gonna get really gushy and a little bit emotional just thinking about um everything that I've already said. Like you sharing your time, your energy, your attention. Um, you know, again, you could be doing literally anything with your day, and the fact that you choose to share some of that time with me is really incredible. I'll go ahead and wrap it up. We'll move into win for the week, but I did just want to say a really intentional and clear thank you to everyone who is here whether you are watching or listening it is very cool and it means a lot so thank you now let's go ahead and get into win for the week if you are new around here a win for the week is just where you share something positive that happened to you over the past week big or small whatever it may be if it made you laugh if it brought you joy if it made you feel grateful i want to hear about it and celebrate with you my win for the week is that my Hydro Jug Traveler is here. I had to pre-order it because this is a newer product and so they don't necessarily have a ton of stock in. And so um, I pre-ordered this after Thanksgiving and it finally got here this past week and I love it. Yes, I love Stanley's. Like I'm still very much into them. I love my Yarrow Yellow Stanley, but I'm a Hydro Jug girly. Like that's my first love in terms of water bottles. Do you remember when I had, if you've been watching for a while, the big half gallon jug that had um, the like, not a case, but it had um, a sleeve with a pocket for your phone. And then you could like sling it over your shoulder. I I loved that water. Well, I still have them both, but I loved those water bottles. And then I moved into Stanley's. But now that they have this big 40 ounce traveler, we're going back to the hydro jug. I love it. And it's really cool because it is leak proof. So you can be like, you can shake it all around. You can toss it. You can walk with it sideways, whatever and you're good. 
And um, if you want to get one for yourself or any other kind of water bottle or a hydration supplement, I do have an affiliate link down below. So feel free to utilize that if you want. If not, and you just want to shop without using the affiliate link, just go to hydrojug.com and buy yourself something because it's high quality stuff. And isn't it cute? I love, I love the cranberry color. So that's my win for the week. And I cannot wait to hear yours and celebrate with you. If you are watching on YouTube, you can leave it in the comment section down below. And if you are listening to the podcast, you can um, leave it in the Q&A section for this particular episode if you are listening on Spotify. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into this reaction. And apologies in advance if I sound out of breath. It's because I am. Um, I mentioned this on Instagram and in a community tab post. Like that's why there was not a video last week because I was sick. But I did do um, a podcast exclusive episode where I responded to some comments on a previous video, the Milena Cicciotti video that I recently did. So if you didn't catch that, feel free to go check it out. But um, yeah, I I've had this like just weird sinus sickness for the past two weeks at this point. Well, like two and a half weeks at this point, but I am on the upswing. Like we're doing so much better than we were a few days ago. I've really been trying to focus on getting better and resting and like not doing too much while also still participating in the holiday because Christmas was this week. But in any case, um, I'm sorry if, if me sounding out of breath is too distracting for you. I'll try to speak slowly. That way I don't um, struggle with it too much, hopefully, throughout the course of this video. But yeah, that's enough rambling. Let's go ahead and get into the reaction. Well, I think the I think the best marriages or relationships are, when I've said this before, I believe on this podcast, like they are when I'm more concerned about your welfare and your happiness than I am my own. You're listening to Chiseled and Called with Brittany Dawn a podcast about finding freedom in imperfection and peace in your broken pieces through Jesus. Our prayer is that today's message will bless you, embolden you, and fix your gaze on the King, that it will stir up the calling God has placed within you. Without further ado, here's your host, Brittany Dawn. Welcome to the Chiseled and Called podcast. I am your host, Brittany Dawn, and today I have my... Okay, this is something that I totally meant to talk about prior to starting, but hearing Jordan's voice, like, I'm like, okay, yeah, he's talking about, okay, putting her needs before his own. That's when you see good marriages happen because you're concerned about somebody else. That'll be an interesting conversation to hear them have, but Brittany... <laughs> mm. We might talk about this a little bit more uh, when I do the recap of her episode with the girlies, but Brittany recently took a girl's trip to Broken Bow with her friends, and let me tell you, she wants to pretend to be like this pistol packing mama, survivalist, protector, husband was on the equivalent of the SWAT team when he was in the force, like all this stuff. This girl does not know basic gun safety. Oh my God, I saw pictures on the Brittany Dawn subreddit of her just having a gun out, like on an end table, being like, when you're a two-way baddie, and it didn't say that, but that's just like me making fun of whatever her caption was, a gun just out on an end table. And then, and then this ding dong decided to build a fire, right? They're out in the wilderness, they're on like a camping, well, not camping, a cabin trip. They build a fire outside. They put rocks around where their fire pit is, and then they put the gun on one of those rocks right by an open flame. Then we see a story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up her name because it's going to bother me if I can't remember her name. I think it's Kristen Kendall, maybe. Let's look it up. Okay, I was close. Not entirely correct, but close. Christy Kendall Bradford. And Christy just puts it like in between the the chair that she's sitting in, like an outdoor, you know, like a Coleman camping chair. She just puts it on her lap and tucks it in between there, like between her hips and the side of the chair. What? Why are you just hanging out with a gun like that? Why is it not in a holster tucked into your pants? Why isn't it, why isn't it somewhere like locked up securely? I don't know what these girls were getting into. 
they all claim that they're sober and that they don't like they act like they're so drunk but they're not drunk they're just drunk on friendship and the holy spirit i don't know about that but why why do you need to have a gun out and like pass it around as if it's a teacup Yorkie like it's not a it's not a dog it's not an accessory it's not something that like you're gonna hand off from one person to another secure it like please put it in a safe place no one thinks you're cool because you have a gun nobody thinks you're cool because you're like hanging out and being like look what we got we believe in the second amendment be responsible care about safety please please care about safety are all of these girls competent in shooting guns I don't know but like It's just such a dumb thing to do. It's so dumb. And I've been meaning to talk about it for a while because I saw those posts a few weeks ago and I just, it just kept slipping my mind, but I had to, I had to address it now. Be a responsible gun owner. Be safe. Carry, carry your weapon. That is your second amendment right. I do not care. But again, nobody thinks you're cool because you have a gun. Nobody is like, wow, that Brittany Dawn. She's packing heat. Oh my God. I want to be like her. Grow up be an adult, be responsible. Don't post dumb stuff like that. Anyway, back into the podcast. My favorite guest, my husband, my best friend, my hubs. Hi, bestie. Oh, wow. Hello, babe. (laughs) What an entrance. Well, one of the things that I told you was if I'm going to come back on your show, I, I want entrance music. I'm going to get you a soundboard okay. for Christmas. And that's it. That's the entrance music. That that's, is... uh, that's Ric Flair. <laughs> that was I dramatic. know the guy. You've, well, you've it, oddly met him. I have. That's weird. We met in Dallas at Moxie's. Watching a football game. Yeah. Hmm. He seemed like a pretty cool guy. Yeah. I, he doesn't Great. have a lot of brain cells left. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't get a lot of interaction out of old Rick. He means well. He yeah. means well. Oh my He's god! A lot. Well, that's so mean. You, Rick, need, might need Jesus. Amen. Yeah. We all need Jesus. Welcome back to the podcast, babe. It's oh, been thanks. a minute. We realized before recording this that he <clears throat> has not been on the podcast since I redid the office. Which, gosh. I redid that like in July. I redid the office in July, August. Something like that. Yeah, it was a while. It was a summer. So it's been a minute mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. since you've been on the podcast. Cause well, had you just had a bunch of like star studded, you know, like. Special guests. Special guests. Russell Johnson. Mm-hmm. Well, he was, he was an OG. He was like the fourth episode. No. Russell Johnson? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was back in like March, April. Well, I mean, who are the other big names that um, you've had? I mean, gosh, I've had Ali Schnacky. I've had, uh, I'm going to be having Pastor uh, Mike on. Are oh, you? Mike Signorelli. That'll be a good one. I'm excited. That'll be powerful. Yeah. Um, he's going to be on soon. And I have some really exciting guests lined up for 2024, but we really wanted to end this episode or end in the seems weird to me that she would just mention one name and not like hype up her past guests because I feel like that could do a lot to um, like foster a healthy collaborative relationship. Not that I would say this because I have different beliefs than Brittany, but if she, because she had uh, JP Sears on and so she was like, oh, JP came and it was great. He was such an awesome person to have on the show. I'd love to have him back. We talked to Paul and Morgan and I would love to hear more of their insight on some Christian topics like, you know, hype up the people who've been on your show because they took the time to come on your show. Like they, they sacrifice time out of their own day i guarantee you you didn't pay them usually you don't so i'm not saying that she should have um but if somebody like comes on your channel it's something that would be beneficial for them because you're like they're um getting exposure from being on your channel but with jp sears he has a really big following on youtube i think he has to have at least a million subscribers he has 3.01 million brit Don't burn this bridge. Again, I'm not trying to like tell her I agree with the collaborations, but from a social media perspective, why would you not 
try and, and hype that up and be like, oh my gosh, I had JP Sears on. He was amazing. He was an awesome guest. I look forward to doing anything that we can together in the future. That would be such an honor. Like hype him up. Talk about past collaborators so that way you can bring more attention to the previous episodes because maybe nobody has watched those yet or listen, listened to them, not watched them. Um, but maybe somebody missed that upload and then they'd be like, oh, wow, she had this person on and that's what they talked about. I should go check it out. And then maybe that opens the door to future collaborations that can be beneficial to both of you. I don't know why I'm so hung up on this and like trying to give her helpful advice, but that's my thought. You know, hype up the people who took the time out of their day to um, get on a call with you and have a conversation and we're willing to be publicly associated with you because there's a lot of people who um, have large followings that are not in favor of Brittany Dawn. And so those people are tying themselves to a liability. I would give them a thanks and a public shout out, but that's just me. This episode, we just started this episode. End this year with a last episode um, to just kind of go out with a bang. And so, yeah, that's what we're here to do. Uh, it is, it's been a wild ride. It's been a wild year. It's been a great year. But what are some good takeaways from this year? Um, well, you know, it, it doesn't feel like this year, but early, early in this year, uh, around the first week of February, mm -hmm. Kansas city chiefs won the super bowl. <laughs> so that's a huge takeaway. I should takeaway. have seen that one coming. Well, he gave me the microphone. Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, in full transparency, we actually already recorded this and I did go on a girl's trip. Mm -hmm. in November and I took my equipment with me because we recorded a podcast. As you guys know, you probably listened to that episode. Upon transportation, somewhere along the way, one of my cords got destroyed. <laughs> but tonight we're like, we're just going to make it work. The, the microphone lit up. We're like, oh, we're good. We're Gucci. We're going to do this. An hour later, I go to listen to uh, the sound to make sure that everything sounds great to submit it to my team. And it did not work. So this is our second attempt. If I could redirect. This is your job. Oh, my God. Take some sample audio. Don't record an entire podcast episode and be like, hope it works. Teehee. You lost a cord and you didn't think to like test it or check it or be like, you know, test one, two, three. Let me make sure this microphone is working and that this audio is being recorded. Also, with Travis Kelsey dating Taylor Swift now, are, are you going to make Jordan denounce the Chiefs because Taylor Swift has demonic music, according to you? It, curious minds want to know. It's your attention <laughs> to the day you left for said girls trip. Yes. A wise, wise man, also known as your husband, walked into your okay, office you're talk about Jesus and said, hey are you taking your podcast equipment? And you said, yeah. And I said, oh, well, just make sure you're really, really care. I don't even th think I got the full word careful out. And I was like, and you go, I know, I know, I will. <laughs> First podcast recording post girls trip. We have broken equipment. <laughs> yeah, because this is the first time I've used these mics. Well, both mics since that said weekend in broken bow oklahoma mm. you know it's like hey Brittany, remember how i'm smarter than you and i told you what to do and you didn't listen yeah i just wanted to remind you of that and make sure that everybody else knew also yeah. it was a good time at what point in the discussion does do you say because this is the part i'm waiting for like mm -hmm. gosh you're right you were right babe <laughs> Like you really, I should have, I should have been more careful and I should have heeded the advice heated the that my husband gave me mm -hmm. before I my left. My wise husband. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. we're doing a question and answer. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing Q and A uh, and you were right. You were right. So I applaud you for that, mm. babe. Did anybody ask the question of who's always right? Because this would have been a perfect opportunity to answer that question. It, it sounds me, like you already have the answer. Me. <laughs> so if i was having this conversation with jordan i would never say you were right like purely out of spite i, I wouldn't give him that satisfaction that's a joke but that's what i thought in my head of <laughs> like don't say it pretty don't tell him sounds like you need a dose of humble pie
you know. You know. Uh-huh. You know. <laughs> uh-huh. Awkward laugh. <laughs> Anyways. All right, I'm going to ask you the first question because Anyways. this has got you yeah, so, written all over it. So yes, we're here to do a QA and a to wrap up 2023. It's wild because the podcast started in 2023 and now we are quickly approaching the one year anniversary of said chiseled and called podcast. So I feel like there's been a lot of growth. I finally feel super comfortable behind a mic, which is really exciting. I feel like you could kind of tell at first that I was like not a podcaster and now I I'm don't. like here for it. I'm glad you do because I still don't. <laughs> it's been, fun. but apparently, like half these questions are geared towards me. They are, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So, all right, I'm just here to give the people what they want. Let's they hear it. Want it. As Ooh. like nervous as it makes me, man, it's way past my bedtime. It's yeah, like ten o'clock. Okay, let's jump to it. Question number one. Number one. Where do you guys want to travel next? Hmm. I mean, I already know. Hello, Costa Rica and Hawaii, which I've been to Hawaii many times, almost moved there in 2017. Praise God I didn't because I met this one. But see, that's where you need a soundboard. I've been politicking for a soundboard. I'm going to get you one. But the producer of this show keeps telling me no. Uh, Do you know how many, do you know how many cool sounds I would have? You would have so many cool sounds. Okay. So it would be (laughs) awful. You're literally looking. Him having a soundboard would be awful. Think about it. Like truly imagine in your head what it would be like if they gave Jordan a soundboard. I don't want to live in a world where Jordan has a soundboard. And I don't think you do either. That sounds. Um, Yes, definitely want to go to Hawaii. Definitely want to go to Costa Rica because I've never been to Costa Rica. And... Okay. Why are they always beach trips? Because I love the beach. I'm meant to be at the beach, babe. Baby, this body was not built for the beach. You're a mountain guy. Yeah. You're a lumber, I married a lumberjack. I I like winter, snow, beards, axes, beard. like chopping firewood. <laughs> I'll cut it out, but Brittany just did an ad for Hazel and Lane, and that's what the music transitions are for, to kind of foil the Hazel and Lane promo. What? You can... I was going to say something. And say you can chop my firewood any day, but I don't know what that even means. Ow! ow. What in the... <laughs> We're married. I, I know, but like... like is you. Are you delirious right now? It's... Like I just said, it's way past my bedtime. What the melatonin does to me, I am not in control of. Sounds like... Why would you take melatonin before recording? (laughs) Again, just so many questions about why certain decisions are made. I'm going to get to chop some wood tonight. (laughs) (laughs) You you, you want me to have a soundboard. I do. I think it would be quite comical. Are you just pulling these off of YouTube? Uh, I cannot reveal my sources. Okay. Maybe you'll find out when I get a real soundboard. <laughs> oh, you got connections? So, yeah. Okay. This is quickly, Great. that's like the third yawn in a row. What's wrong with me? Am I pregnant? No. No, Do I want to be not. pregnant? Yes. Yes. And we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, Where do you want to travel to next, babe? Anywhere in the following states. North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Idaho, Utah. And what do they all have in common? They're cold and they have mountains. Cold, snow, mountains, wood, firewood, axe, chop, tree, Mm -hmm. survival. Yeah. So now would be a good time since we're talking about the mountains and the beach to share about by the time this goes live, which will be next week, chances are my... The spots for my 2024 group trip are going to be open and available, and we are going to Costa Rica. Hey, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Are you really not excited about Costa Rica? No, I mean, real. uh, No. Well, he doesn't have to go because he's not attending the retreat, so he can be off the hook for that. It's probably better if he doesn't go, to be honest, because we've talked about how utterly bizarre it is that. These 
trips, these meetups, these retreats are mainly comprised of women. Like I, I can't say 100%, but I've never seen a photo of a man who bought a ticket to go to a She Lives Freed meetup. And it's weird to have Jordan just hanging around. It's uncomfy. I would not like that. I, like, not a fan. Whatever. Um, but also that I don't think is open yet. I was actually looking at Brittany's website earlier today and um, taking a look at the events and like ticket costs and stuff like that. And I didn't see anything about a Costa Rica trip or a 2024 trip. The last thing I saw was for an April meetup. So I don't know about that. Oh, I like Costa Rica. Have you been? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's think they have. I just now. don't think they have snow and mountains. And I don't think there's going to be a need for firewood. Can I tell you what our plan is in Costa Rica? I so I talked to, to my it. travel agent. He has a whole itinerary planned up for us already, and I'm so pumped. Okay, so basically what we're doing is the first day is going to be like massages, hot springs, relaxation station, and then the second day we are going to be horseback riding down to a waterfall to swim. Can I be honest? Yeah. That scares the crap out of me. Why? You've seen me on horses, and you want me to ride a horse to a waterfall? Yes. What if said horse is not under control when as we approach the waterfall? What if I'm not? A is that what she and Jordan are doing before the attendees get there, or is that part of what the meetup would be? Because that does not sound like a Christian centric retreat like it doesn't sound like a, a ministry centered event um it sounds more like those wellness retreats that like um yoga influencers do and manifestation influencers do especially because it's in costa rica it's like a, a wellness trip which is different than um like a religious retreat but again, I don't know if that's what she and Jordan are going to do separately or if that's part of the offering. That's catching me off guard, like seriously. Under control as we... You know what? It's one of those things like, that's fine. <laughs> it's a heck of a way to go out. Amen. I mean, I that is, yeah, that is it right there. Okay. This is a cool story. That's like as a... That's how the Lord's calling us home. Like as, you know, in my former line of work and my current line of work like these are the things that guys think about if you're gonna everybody's got to go out everybody's everybody who knows the lord they've, what we're all destined to yeah, well yeah your your clock is going to expire when the good lord calls you home mm -hmm. we think about it all the time that we want to go out in a super cool way mm -hmm. not like not a dumb way yeah like like if it's gonna you're, that's why they say blaze of glory oh yeah. So that can't happen. Go out in a blaze of glory. Horseback? No, I mean, horseback off of a waterfall would be pretty ridiculous. <laughs> like. Anyways, I really don't think. I hope somebody gets it on video. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't think people are going to want to come now. Anyways, uh, yeah. Costa Rica. Yay. If you. <laughs> You could sound a Maybe little not. more excited, babe. If you want to go to Costa Rica with us in 2024, it's actually going to be really exciting. And um, I know Jordan doesn't sound very thrilled, but I'm very excited. And I can promise you that I will bring the same level of sarcasm on said trip. Yes. Yes, he will. He unequivocally, without a doubt, will. <laughs> um, right. Yes. So moving on to the next question. Um, what is Jordan's perspective and experience of witnessing you being judged on social media? Take it away, babe. I do my best to not even give that kind of stuff the time of day. Yeah. You know, the, the trolls on social media, that's not of the Lord. All they do is they, you know, spew hatred and try to pick apart, tear apart, you, um, our families, mm -hmm. our relationship, our marriage. Um, so it doesn't bring any value to me or my day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and actually I, I'm really proud of you and how you handle it, but, um, I really don't think about it or 
dwell on it because those people have zero effect on my day in day out life. Well, and I think it also helps you seeing how unaffected I am by it. Yeah. Like if I was having meltdown after meltdown, I think it would bother you a lot more. But it time has proven itself that I'm genuinely like I don't care. Well, it I was really a learning curve too because I was. I don't care, which is why I talk about it all the time. And also, it would really bother you if it bothered me, right? Like that's that's the kind of angle I'm getting from her jumping in and being like, because he's like, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't add any value to my day. These people are trolls, which of course is his perspective and he has every right to um to see it that way i mean i think there's a lot of valid criticism given but when you do um kind of constantly and consistently get negative feedback i think mentally it's a lot easier to um be like well this is this is from a troll this is somebody who just wants to see britney fall this is somebody who just wants to see like our lives not be good and so that's how I'm going to perceive them is as a troll instead of being like, is what they're saying valid? Do all of these people have valid points? Is this actually um, something that should be considered and changed? Like it's easier to just flip that switch and be like, well, they're trolls who hate us and they're haters for no reason. So like they're just miserable and they're looking for somebody to pick apart and stick with that. Um, but he's literally sitting here being like, those people don't matter. It doesn't affect my day because it doesn't bring any value to my day. You can be a troll if you want. And Brittany has to jump in and be like, well, the only reason it doesn't bother you is because it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not sure if it's a self-assurance thing of her needing that validation of, well, hold on. Like, they're saying that stuff about me. So because I'm unaffected, that's why you're unaffected, right? Because if I was her, you would really care. Like it would really impact you, right? Or if it's, well, all these people on the internet commonly say that Jordan looks miserable to be with me because there are a lot of posts like that. And Jordan doesn't always look super happy to participate. So I understand why those kinds of speculations are made. Um, so I don't know if it's more so uh, a thought of how that phrasing is going to come off to people who aren't fans of Britney and they're going to be like, see, he doesn't even care. And so she's in her head trying to be like, ah, hold on, hold on. We get this piece of criticism. Let's nip it in the bud and say like, right, it, it, it only doesn't bother you because it doesn't bother me in an attempt to prevent negative assumptions being made even more so than they already are. It's a learning curve because that's not something that I'm used to. Mm -mm. So when we first started dating, I was like, holy buckets, like what is this? And then kind of seeing you walk that out yeah. And seeing how like, also, I mean, a big encouragement is like, you don't let it affect you. So I'm mm -hmm. like, well, if she doesn't let it affect her, then why do I let it affect me? And, and I'm always you know, the one that picks you up. Like if you get offended by something that someone says about me online that you see, I'm always the one like, I'm like, babe. Which hey, is a rare, stuff. is a rarity because yeah. I'm never. It's very rarely happened. Yeah. We're talking more like media headlines, like, yeah. you know, and I'm always the one that's like, hey, like brushed off. It's not that big of a deal. I don't if I'm know, not I, affected by it. You shouldn't be affected by it either. I do think that like one of my proudest moments was when I logged onto the Fox News app and within the same page of like scrolling up, it was an article about you and Joe Biden. And I was like, and you were on top and I was like, it. heck yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I should be uh, proud of myself that I was on Fox uh, News to that yeah. level or absolutely. What article is that? I want to see paul that i was next to joe biden well don't know. yeah but okay you know, this isn't about politics so we'll Sleepy just say that right there i uh i really do but no i i really do think that the way that i handle it has really helped you just learn to like not even let it phase you um have there been it's, times when well it's different because i've never been somebody who gives a crap about what people think. Mm -hmm. Um, it was more the, it was more the protector in me that I get mm -hmm. fired up. I'm like, Oh no, you did not. Yeah. And yeah, if it, if it doesn't bother you, then it doesn't bother me. Yeah. So, cause I married a uh, German shepherd husband, not a golden retriever husband. I still don't necessarily know that I understand that analogy, but I got it. <laughs> yeah. So golden retriever husband is, uh, one that is sweet and kind 
and loving. I am those things. <laughs> no, you are. You are. I'm gonna, let me finish. Sweet and kind and loving and gentle and caring and just all the golden retriever qualities, right? A German shepherd husband is protective, a little jaded, doesn't like to be in crowds, mm. a little on edge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But also all the other things, caring, loyal, loving, kind. Okay. I understand kind the to me. now. Yeah. She's like, you're antisocial and mean. <laughs> but yeah, like you're like a golden retriever, but not a golden retriever. Because like, yeah, you, you're loving, but you know, you're jaded and a little bit aggressive. <laughs> That's interesting though, because I have definitely seen TikToks of like the golden retriever boyfriend or golden retriever dad, but I've never seen anything about um, a German shepherd husband or, you know, like that concept. So I'm not sure if she made that up or if that's somewhere in her algorithm. But it's so funny how she has to present herself as being so countercultural while also adhering to trends in our culture. Like um, something that just pops into my head. Stanley's. Again, not judging because I love me a good Stanley, but she's playing into that popular trend um, of Stanley's, of Uggs, of putting a bow in her hair because that's something that a lot of people are doing now. So there's certain trends that Brittany is so ready to play into because it's something that um, it plays positively on social media. Like it makes people look at you and identify with you, I think. And so she's okay doing that. But when it comes to certain other things, it's like, well, I'm not like other girls. We're not like other couples. You're not a weak golden retriever. You're a German shepherd because you're going to protect me as your wife. But, um, you know, completely irrelevant, but just a thought. I don't think being a golden retriever husband means that you don't care about protecting your family or <laughs> protecting your wife. Um, it's just interesting to me that she would take something as silly and goofy as that and have to put a negative spin on it. And, and make sure that everybody knows Jordan's not a goofy golden retriever. He's a German shepherd and he's a killer. Like it, it goes again with the whole, uh, he's trained SWAT. We have so many armed brothers at our wedding. We had security. I know I can call anybody in the middle of the night and they'll come protect the house with a gun. And it's just like, you don't need to do that. We don't need to take this angle. It's just weird. Let it be known that Brittany Dawn is anti-golden retriever, but... We do know that she doesn't have the greatest history with dogs anyway. So not a surprise. <laughs> no, he's Jordan is honestly probably more of a people person than I am. On You, you really are. You love mm. people. You never meet a stranger. And I'm like, mm, can we trust them? Yeah, you like, got me on the crowds thing. I wait to hear from the Lord to truly trust someone. But, um, you know, that comes with being. I'll talk that. to anybody. I'm just not going to like everybody. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're we're called okay. to yeah. like be personable to everyone. And personable, that's a really hard word to say. Personable? Per, per, personable. The Texas accent bites again. Per, personable. Per, 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 per. Per, 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 per. It sounds like this. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> do you, do you, do, do you, do I need you? No, do I need you, you might need, yeah, sure. Do I need a soundboard? What is the answer? <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next question. Yeah, so uh, just so you guys, in case you didn't catch all that, um, Jordan is truly unfazed by social media, as am I. Just like, just don't care. Just don't Great. care. Um, number three, do you want to ask this or do you want me to ask this? I got it. Okay. Jordan's taking his sweater off over there, knocking all, over olive trees. Well, we are in an office. Why is there an olive tree in here? It's for aesthetics. I know the rest of my office is chaos, but the olive tree makes me happy. Literally my entire office right now is Hazel Online Inventory, boxes upon boxes, we were just packing orders before this. Like I'm like tripping over things, almost fallen, stubborn toes. But the olive tree in the corner that no one ever it's sees. stood the test of time. It makes me happy. Mm, good. Baby. Amazing. You know what? If it makes you Riveting. happy, it makes me happy. All right. And that is marriage right there. <laughs> Number three. Would you guys want to move? Why? 
or why not? Yes. You first. Yeah. So Th this answer is, is obvious. Do what? I said this answer is obvious. Yeah. We we actually um oh, we've seriously had this conversation several times. Um yes, we we want to move. And probably sooner than later, where do we want to move to? We're staying in Texas. <laughs> Third generation Shock. Texan here. Don't plan on leaving anytime soon. Just Doesn't make any sense to move out of the greatest nation in the world Amen. right now. Amen. Um, why we want to move. And I, and I say this from a place of, I love our home. I'm so grateful for this home. I realize how much of a blessing our home is, um, especially in just the way that the economy is. And, and it's just crazy times we're living in. Um, I realize that I realize how much of a blessing and how grateful I am for this house. However, Imagine making the state that you live in such a staple of your personality. Weird. Weird behavior. Um, that also doesn't invalidate the fact that this home has carried a lot of trauma for me from the moment that I moved into this house, which was early 2020, literally not even two months after COVID started taking off, um, about a month and a half into COVID. I moved from Dallas to Fort Worth and within a matter of weeks, um, the trauma started. There were, and I, and we, I'm not going to brush this all back up from under the rug. We've already discussed all this. If you want to listen to it, you can go back to like the lawsuit cancel culture podcast from earlier this year. Um, but before I met Jordan, there were some people that showed up at the house. Guns were involved. Guns were fired off. Police dispatched a whole thing. Um, from then on out, then you have the lawsuit and cancel culture and more people showing up and people posting our address and doxing me and, and taking pictures of our home and sitting outside of our home. And then if that's not enough, my miscarriage and, um, full transparency, it was actually a rough morning for me. Um, just some days the waves of it feel like they just slap me across the face and, this morning, I couldn't even be in my bathroom because that was where I found out I was pregnant. And that was also where I miscarried our baby. And so um, while, like I said, while I love this home and it mm -hmm. does feel like home, if we're being honest, babe, there was there have been more seasons than not where it has not felt like home for me. And you know this, we've I've cried on your shoulder a lot of um, not feeling safe here mm -hmm. for many reasons for the reasons that I just listed and feeling anxious in my own house, which no one should ever feel that way because of, um, outside circumstances and people that were just saying unnecessary things and sending unnecessary threats for whatever reason. Um, and so, yeah, we, we do want to move and I'll, I'll let kind of, I'll let Jordan say where we intend on moving Okay, before Jordan gets into it, I can definitely understand, um, like, being in your feelings at some point and being like, oh, this thing happened in this room, or I remember exactly where I was when I got this news, and not always, um, like, being able to ignore that in your surroundings, right, of sometimes it's just going to be a rough day, and it, like the example Brittany gave was in this bathroom, I found out I was pregnant and then I later miscarried. I can imagine that pretty regularly that's going to come up, like that's going to pop into your head. And maybe some days you'll be able to be like, yeah, like, wow, what an awful time that I went through, but I'm not going to dwell on it. We're going to move on and we're going to have a good day. And then some days just being in your emotions and not necessarily being able to move on super quickly in the moment and really feeling the sadness that that is associated with. Totally understand that. On the other points though, Brittany frequently shares what the outside of her home looks like. There are public documents that because of Brittany are easily available to anyone on the internet that contain her home address. 
Brittany has not been careful about keeping where she lives private. And so while I don't think it's right for anyone to just show up at her house with ill intention or even like, even if you're a fan, that's not okay. You should not go to her house. Um, you know, we got to respect privacy and boundaries. So no one should be showing up somewhere uninvited like that. That is her home. She deserves to feel safe there. But I, I question how authentically she's expressing her feelings because she is the one who has made her home so easy to find. And she can sit here and be like, I'm scared because people showed up and that's valid. But at the same time, you're the one who made it easy for those people to show up. So again, it's not okay if anyone showed up at her house to like for them to have done that is absolutely not okay. But I do question the validity of it because uh, a typical person, if they were in a situation like that, where um, at the time when she had moved in, she was getting a lot of negative attention. She was supposedly getting a lot of threats, negative messages, people threatening to harm her and her DMs, stuff like that. And yet she still made it incredibly easy to find where she lives. So I'm not sure how authentic those stories of people showing up are. I'm not sure how actually scared she is, how concerned she is for her safety, because again, she's she's not being protective over keeping information private. So that's my thought on that. And also, I, I'm curious, this is not me making a statement or saying that I know what's going on, but I am curious if they are considering selling the house and like downsizing or moving to a less expensive area because she's going to be making her payments from the lawsuit settlement and they're going to increase year after year. So maybe it's a a financial move and they don't want to say that they want to, you know, play it up of like a safety concern and associating negative memories with certain things that happened there. As far away from people as possible. Amen. (laughs) I'm going to start my mini farm. Oh, Lord. (laughs) One thing I am confident of is that when we do get some property and put a house on it, that we will have no problem qualifying for a homestead exemption in the state of Texas based off of animals because, good Lord, you have already named half of your petting zoo. Mm -hmm. I can name them again. (laughs) So we have Matilda, my dairy cow, because I'm going to start drinking dairy. From a cow, because that's the that's just the way God intended it to be. And then, um, so I have two of my own horses that are in my name. We have five, but two of those are mine. And so I, I would like to jump in on the raw milk trend. Dangerous. Don't do it. <laughs> like I, I am somebody. I don't consume dairy. It. I have endometriosis, and the hormones and um, dairy products impact my body in a really negative and noticeable way. And so I don't consume dairy. I don't love all of the farming practices in America. And I think there are a lot of things that could be done to produce more nutritious food that isn't necessarily um, super inflammatory. You know, I, I am somebody who eats a certain way to feel better. Like I do that for my health. And so I understand somebody being like, I'm not comfortable with the way that dairy cows are treated. Or, you know, I think there's a lot of hormones in there or they pasteurize it too quickly. And so it loses some nutrition. And I would like to do, um, like I would like to buy organic dairy or I would like to buy, um, there's a brand of dairy that is pasteurized at a lower temperature for a longer time. So it's still safe to consume, but the processing of it is different. And so it's more nutrient dense, supposedly. I haven't done a ton of looking into it, but I heard somebody else talking about it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting, you know, because I can understand being like, I don't like big box chain supermarkets. I don't like a lot of farming practices or the way that food is produced. I have some concerns. Totally valid to Um, be aware of those things and to make different decisions based on that and how you feel and what you're comfortable with. But all these fundy influencers are jumping on the raw milk trend and I'm concerned. It's like the latest and greatest thing that you can do to virtue signal that you're a homemaker who takes care of and cares about her family's well-being is by giving them raw dairy. And I'm not a fan of it. it. 
I have concerns. Like to build my herd up to five. I know this is not news to you, babe. <laughs> Horses or total animals? Horses. Oh, Lord. Yeah. So I've got three room for three more. And then I would like to expand. We at the ranch, we currently have Black Angus and Wagyu. Jordan's rubbing his eyes over there. I think he's like, dear Lord, what is she talking about? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I've thought this through. This is my plan. Um, okay. So we have Wagyu and Black Angus at the ranch that we are breeding and raising and separated, obviously not together in the same posture. Um, I would like to also expand to Highland cattle, which are the really cute furry. They look like they belong in the mountaintops. You can't eat those? No, they're not going to be eaten. Oh. I have names for them already. Oh. Yeah. They're going to okay. be named. They're going to be pets. And um, For what yeah. purpose? I'm not really a fan of chickens. Mom, for, dad. Wait, wait you, you brushed over my question. Mm -hmm. For the, the Highland cows that have names. Yeah. And they're pets. Yes. For what purpose? Um, just For because, sales, right? Okay. Because <laughs> what's it. the admission fee going to be to this uh, petting zoo? Well, the only people that are coming out there to our place are going to be our friends, so nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, and what else? Oh, baby goats. I'm going to have some baby goats. I would love to name one of them Wilbur, and um, I think that's it. The one thing you don't have to worry about is cats. Okay. Because yeah. I've just never really clicked with cats. The only cat I like belongs to our friends. His name is Poe, and he stole my heart. And he's what is what kind of cat is he? I don't even know. I don't know anything about he has, cats. Like, I'm allergic to him. He's so cute. He's literally the cutest cat I've ever seen. Yeah. But that is the only cat that I love. To all the fellas that might be out there, Christmas time is approaching. If your wife asks for a horse or a really expensive purse mm -hmm. by the purse. What makes you say that? Because yeah. the horse has to be fed every month. Like I tell you, babe, the, the cheapest part about buying a horse is actually buying the horse. People don't realize that until the they purse come to it. doesn't have to have an emergency vet visit, visit. Mm -hmm. at 2 a.m. The horse. Or supplements every month. Did Keep you going. know that? Did you know that Harley and Gunner are on supplements every month? They're, they're, we spend more on supplements for the horses than we do on me. Facts. Partially because I refuse to take them. I just, I just literally, but, when I was up there a few days ago, my dad came down to the barn. He's like, what's this? I was like, those are their supplements. And he goes, oh. <laughs> have they, so have they been getting <laughs> their supplements? or? I no? mean, we'll find out. <laughs> Someone's getting them. The well, it ain't me. Going down. It ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I could talk about horses all day. Anyways. So, yeah, we're going to move eventually. We're going to move off the grid, away from people, especially with the way this country is going. I just think it's a smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. From it, all jokes aside, um, things are getting kind of crazy out there. So we'll I definitely her. know I want to raise our kids in the country the way that i mean I, i'm grateful I'm, I'm not even joking when i say this i'm, I'm grateful that that's how i was raised because i know you were a city boy and i just think how sweet it will be to be able to raise our kids like that and probably homeschool and all the things so um yeah next one next one is this okay. me or you i think it's you is your I have no further comments on that. Frankly, I tuned out a little bit because they were just talking about like horses and, and moving and not spending money on Jordan. But even if they did, Jordan wouldn't take the supplements. And I was like, okay. Hope renewed after a divorce? Yes. Good answer. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you have to be careful on where you're trying to find that hope. I think if you are leaving a divorce and your heart is obviously shattered and broken and you're going to try to find validation from someone somehow, I think that if you're not careful, you can try to find that in the wrong places. And speaking from experience, um, that was really where the door opened up and I started really biting into the apple that the enemy handed me was with sexual sin and pornography and all the things. And 
um, if you're not careful, I think that can get, that can be a really slippery slope. 100%. I mean, I say this with the most love um, in the world. My hope is not found in this marriage. Mm -hmm. This marriage is amazing. This yeah. marriage is um, one of the best parts about my life on this earth. Oh, babe, that's so sweet. <laughs> but but uh, I don't find my hope lives. in this marriage. My hope from com comes from above. Yeah. And so I think the the true answer to that question is, yeah, I mean, is like, is my hope renewed in like finding a woman that loves me and puts me before herself and has chases after the Lord every day. Yeah. My hopes renewed in that because I found that. Mm -hmm. Did I have, did I put all of my hope in that to begin with? No, yeah. my hope was in my hope comes from above and yeah. comes from the Lord. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so yeah. true. I love that. And I think too, like, um, it speaks volumes at how Christ centered our marriage is because I think what you just said could easily and not in our, us, like not in our marriage, but in a situation where maybe they weren't as Christ centered or rooted in the Lord saying that your hope is not found in someone that could have offended someone, the other person, right? Like yeah. in my past, when I was just starting to live for the Lord and walk with him, that would have offended me. And defense is a choice. And so I love that you just were able to rattle that off. And I'm sitting here like, amen, amen. Like my hope does not come from you. It does not come from my job. It does not come from a, any relationship, any friendship in my life. And so, yeah, moving on. Well, a little bit of your hope comes from me because, which do not, my, my God can do anything. Amen. But I have never seen him change a light bulb. A amen. And you need help with that. Amen. Oh my God. Actually, now that you this is so dumb. I was just about to be like, you know what? I think those are all fair and valid points. Of course, there can be hope after divorce. Like, I feel really sad that somebody would ask that, but I'm sure they're going through a really tough time. But yes, of course. Of course, there can be hope after divorce. And yes, if you are a, a Christian, I don't want to get too like preachy because I'm not trying to tell anybody how to think. But if you're a Christian, that is where you should be looking for your hope. Like it shouldn't be coming from an external relationship with another person. You shouldn't place all your eggs in the basket of your marriage. That's why a marriage is so beautiful because it is a choice every single day to foster a healthy relationship and put each other first and compromise and like build a life together. But it's it should never be like, I absolutely need this person or I will not be okay. That's not necessarily a healthy way to look at things. And so them having this conversation, I'm like, yep, I'm here. I'm with you. You're looking to Christ. You're not placing your, your worth in external validation from other people. I'm here. Jordan's saying, well, no offense. Like I say this with all the love in the world. My hope does not come from this marriage. My hope comes from the Lord. And then Brittany being like, yep, same. And he goes, well, some of your hope should come from me because Jesus never changed a light bulb. Ah, oh my God. It's so funny because in my opinion, Brittany and Jordan both have massive egos, but I can see a lot of times where Brittany will play herself down or like play certain things down in order to play the relationship up. And whenever she does that, it's like Jordan's here to like whack her. He's like, mm. No, well, actually, um, my hope doesn't come from our marriage, but yours should. <laughs> like, he can't, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. Brittany is trying to present their marriage to be a certain way on the internet. She's being very careful about how she curates it. And Jordan's like, ah, ah. <laughs> nope, my goodness. All right, we got 36 minutes left of this. Let's power through. Let's get through it. Let's get to something juicy, something good to talk about. Say that we do have some light bulbs that need to be fixed. I knew, I knew it. <laughs> I legit, whenever uh, when we were not dating before I met you, I had light bulbs going out in my townhome, and uh, I would literally sk uh, not Skype. Wow, that's so old school. I would literally Facetime my dad and be like, "Dad, how do I do this?" My poor dad. He's just grateful he's not on a 
midnight calls anymore because of my crap. Yeah. How do I change a light bulb? Ma'am? Okay. I, like, I feel like that's a lie. I feel like that's that's something that she's just made up to be like, I'm a little baby. I can't even change a light bulb. That's why I need my Jordy. Yeah, that was, that was literally, uh, that was literally what he, as, as I reached over and hugged him as he handed me your hand in marriage at the altar, this he literally whispered in my ear and said, there's a no return policy. <laughs> Swear. So, yeah. You know, I he, little. He, I wish he would have given me a little <laughs> bit more of a heads up of what I was getting myself into. Yeah. But I'm not trying to take you back. If y'all want to know what my relationship okay. with my dad is like, it is, and babe, feel free to correct me. It is like John Dutton and Beth Dutton. Literally. Yeah. Like John yeah. Dutton knows her crap and tolerates it and loves her to pieces. <laughs> but yeah. also calls her out on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is me. Yeah. Um, Moving on. Next one. That's so weird. That's such like a weird thing to brag about and be like, yeah, I'm incompetent. Yeah, I, I I can't do stuff by myself. My dad puts up with my crap, but he loves me anyway. Like, yeah, we all have flaws. We all have stuff that it, we could be better at or areas where we need some help. We could, you know, be like, I need to kind of rely on somebody else for this because I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing. But I would never get on the internet and be proud of of being an annoyance which is the way that Britney's describing it of course i have flaws i have shortcomings i am far from a perfect person i'm sure i get on people's nerves sometimes but i generally try to be a capable competent independent person who tries to figure things out on my own. And then if I can't, I'm like, ah, hey, I could really use your expertise on this. I could really use a favor. Would you mind helping me with this? And that's that's how I want to be. I want to be somebody who, um, I don't, I don't know if this is going to come off wrong, but it's like, I want to be a person who adds value to other people's lives. And that's not to say that my only value would come from something that I could do from somebody else. But it's like, I, I'm not going to get on the internet and brag about being an inconvenience, which is what Brittany's making it sound like. It's like, I'm so goofy. I'm so silly. I don't know how to do anything. My dad puts up with my crap, but he loves me anyway. And, you know, he told Jordan, no returns, no return policy. This is a final sale because he finally doesn't have to put up with my crap anymore. And that's a really weird thing, like to be bragging about how much of an inconvenience you are is kind of odd. I don't know if my if my point is being expressed clearly, but I hope that you can generally get the idea of what I'm saying. It's, it, it's just a weird way to want to present yourself on the internet. Like I would not brag about my incompetence. I don't know if my point is coming off entirely clear, but I'm hoping that the majority of you understand what I'm trying to express and you, you understand the sentiment behind it. What, what is, is... Oh, this is your turn. What is one physical trait of Jordan's that you want your kids to inherit? Your eyes. Oh. They're beautiful. I was just about to say, you Handsome. didn't pause long enough. I was going to be like, not all at once now, babe. Your eyes. Of course. And your teeth. Your smile. Because you didn't have braces. I didn't. And I did. And it was terrible. Well, brace face running around Whitesboro, Texas. I know. I did not run that town. That town ran me. And I wish I had pictures of what my teeth looked like before I got braces. Because let me tell you, they were not cute. Little chiclets? Um, you, don't, you don't have any photos from your childhood? You don't have a photo album? Okay. Chiclets and I had a big, big gap in my face. Did front. you really? I did. <laughs> I would pay I, anything to see to get some photo evidence of this. Can you believe that? It no. just really goes to show how much um, science can really change the body. Wow. It's pretty yeah. cool what they can do, orthodontist. And um, pretty cool. I'll never forget when I – so I had them for five years. That's a long time. Yeah, I got them in fifth grade and I got them out. So that's good because if you got them in fifth grade, I mean, you didn't have them in the real formidable years like high school and stuff where – Mm -mm. you know, everybody's really concerned about it. Well, if she had them for five years and she got them in fifth grade, she would get them out in 10th grade, which is your second year of high school. 
Are we having the same conversation? Image and all this. Yeah, body yeah. image, self-esteem yeah. issues. No, I got them off right before my freshman year. Oh, okay. And I'll never forget, uh, I got in the car. I was really sad. So that would be three years then, fifth through eighth grade. That's how math works in case anybody um, was trying to track that with me. That day for some reason or another and they couldn't figure out Just why. Like the opposite of what you should be. Because they were like, wow, Brittany, are you so excited? Like you've graduated orthodontist. <laughs> you know, your orthodontist years. And I'm like, yeah, because I had like, I mean, my mouth was really small, which my dad always said, funny, she talks so much. <laughs> Like that her mouth is, is small, uh, but yeah, she talks all the time. That is a conundrum. That's um, for sure. <laughs> I had an expander. So like my mom had to crank my expander every single night and it would put pressure from the inside to push my teeth out huh. to make my mouth bigger. Yeah. Crazy. So painful. Um, had that for about a year and a half. And so anyways, had braces for five years. Y'all don't care to hear about all this. I'm just getting my story. I, the day I got it off or got them off, um, I cried on the way home because I thought I had bunny teeth. What are bunny teeth? Like the big buck teeth. Like You don't have... (laughs) I had gotten so used to seeing braces on my teeth that when I got them off, I was like, I hate them. And my mom was like, too bad. We just paid X amount of thousands of dollars for you to have straight teeth. And... You know, so that just proves my point. I want our kids to have your teeth because that would save us so much money. Well, that's sweet of you, babe. Okay. I appreciate the compliment and also the uh, concern about finances. No, I, you know, I'm just always thinking ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll let you ask number six. Do you guys hunt deer, bear, or elk? Uh, so, no, not regularly. Yeah. Um, I've been on one hunting trip in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I killed. But he's an outdoorsman. He wants the mountain vacations. He wants to chop wood and be scruffy. You know, you don't hunt. Brittany wants to drink, you know, milk straight from a cow, but you don't want to catch your own food. Hmm. A three hundred pound wild hog. It was massive. At my buddy's ranch in Central Texas, went down there with some friends Those and some some veteran buddies. Huh? Those things are terrible. Yeah, they're awful. They're really a problem. Um, they're a major problem at our ranch right now. Yeah. Outside of that, um, no. Yeah. Not really. I mean, I have a ton of buddies that do it all the time, but it's so like, I have a buddy that goes from the beginning of October through November or through December every single weekend. Wow. So that's fascinating. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. For sure. And the other aspect of it is it's not something I could do with you because why? Um, you love to talk to me no matter where we are. And I love it, but not one single animal will be within a hundred yards of us. It's literally like a few weeks ago. So my parents have a major hog problem at the ranch at the moment. Like it's, it's, pretty bad. Not even pretty bad. It's getting really bad. And so Jordan and I were out in the pastures just checking to see if we could maybe find them to kill off a few. And I I can't wait for the PETA people to come come at me for that. (laughs) I'm like, y'all have no idea how dangerous these hogs are. Um, So anyways, we're out there and we're walking around. It's sunset. It's really not even sunset. It is dusk. Like there is like no sunlight left. It's getting dark out. And all you can hear is us walking. I wear my freaking spurs. Why I had my boots and spurs on, I don't well, know. Because you came, you had just got done riding horses. I know. Yeah. But like, I didn't think to take those off because no, I'm know. like, we're going to be quiet. Now, hogs are dumb. They're just, we just don't know where they are. They're not that dumb. Well, yeah. And so I'm wearing my spurs. You can hear my spurs clanking. I'm pretty sure everyone here knows what those sound like. And then all of a sudden you hear me whispering, did you bring any snacks? Because I got hungry and we hadn't had dinner yet. Yeah. And Jordan just turns around and looks at me and he's like, are you done yet? Or, well, no, what I, what I really should have said is we're done here because yeah. there's no chance any, there's any animals <laughs> around us right now. So. Yeah. So we don't really hunt. Uh, I do not hunt. Jordan hunts if he has to like wild hogs, et cetera. So what I'll get, 
you know, this is not an emotion that I frequently experience, but I am feeling a little bit bad for Brittany. It's like her dad telling her, you know, it's surprising you have a small mouth because you talk so much. And Jordan's literally saying, I could not take you hunting because you would be physically incapable of shutting your mouth long enough for us to be successful at it. Like, that's mean. I don't know if it's true or not, but I I was sitting here thinking about the last time my dad said something like that to me. And I couldn't even think of an instance in which he had said something like that. Like I'm sitting here thinking about the type of relationship that I have with my dad, which of course is not like how everyone's relationship is. It's not, I'm not trying to be like, it should be like this or it's wrong. But, but I'm just thinking about the way that my dad speaks to me. And I can't think of a time when he intentionally put me down or like made me feel bad about myself, even if it was a joke, even if Brittany is laughing like, ha ha, he said no returns. Ha ha, I have a big mouth and he's joking with me. It's, it's weird. Like I've never heard her say anything about her dad, like building her up. And it kind of is the same with Jordan. Jordan doesn't necessarily compliment her very much. He's, he says that he's happy in the marriage and this is one of the best parts of his life. But then there's always a dig that's taken at Brittany. It's always like, oh, I love you and I'm happy that we're married, but you're dumb and you think midnight blue is actually blue. Like he he had said something about her wanting like a midnight blue car and he was like, well, you don't understand the concept of midnight because it's not actually blue. I don't even remember the whole context of that, but it was something about her like being dumb and not understanding colors of the night sky and then with this of her like I can't take you uh, I can't take you um hunting because you wouldn't be able to shut your mouth is essentially what he said he said it as a joke but he's telling her you can't shut up you're not a capable human being of controlling yourself and so you can't go hunting even if I wanted to go hunting with you we couldn't go because you would ruin it And that is sad. As much as I dislike Brittany and the things that she says and does and the way that she doesn't take accountability for harmful actions that she's committed in the past and is still doing, that is kind of sad when you think about it as a concept. As a person who enjoys sarcasm and humor like that, I don't think there's wrong with making those jokes and having a relationship where you can joke around with somebody you love and you can roast them every now and then. But I don't think that should be like the only way that you communicate with your spouse or with your child. Like, and we don't know everything that happens. We don't know everything that goes on. We don't know the dynamics of every relationship in her life. But from what she is presenting on the internet, it's a, it's a lot of things being said about Brittany that are jabs that that are like digs at her and so it, it's just something that i've noticed and it does make me feel badly the next one yeah what is one piece of advice you'd give to couples mm. it's tough um i didn't really plan this one but the first thing that comes to mind is not to be selfish mm. let me expand That's on that one. so when you're single and you're living by yourself, as I was for about four years. Why are you laughing at me? I just are you envisioning what single Brittany was like? I'm I'm still to this day curious how single Brittany made it allowed alive. Honestly, by the grace See? of God, that like there there's literally mm-hmm. not enough. You could do an entire season of near death moments of single Brittany that she shouldn't have made it out of. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of moments when I look back and I'm like, the Lord had his hand over me every time, even when I wasn't living for him. Praise God. So, um, yeah. So when you're single and living by yourself, you just, you don't answer to anyone. Like when I was living in Dallas, I didn't have anyone telling me I couldn't go out at 10 PM. I didn't have any curfew. I didn't have anyone telling me I had to wake up at 7 AM. Like I could do as I pleased, however I wanted, Um, and I did for five years. And so when I met Jordan, you know, you're still kind of selfish because you are living by yourself, but marriage (laughs) is eye opening because all of a sudden you're sharing your space with a man, you're 
OCD clean house. I'm not OCD, but I do like to keep things neat and tidy. Um, you know, you're, you're letting someone else come into that. And so things are kind of changing and, um, laundry is piling up and you're like, wait, what now I have to do your laundry too. And, and just, it's, it's an ebb and a flow and it's truly, um, I make it sound terrible. It's yeah, the I mean, Lord. Do, do you truly, enjoy marriage? <laughs> no, I love marriage. It's so fun. But as someone, you know, we've been married almost two and a half years going on three and it's like, it's humbling. It's the best way for me to say it. Like the Lord just does a really good w- job in humbling you through marriage. And when you think about it, like marriage is supposed to make you look more like Christ. And so it's not yeah. always easy. Well, I think the, I think the best. This is something that I've never really understood that I've heard a lot of people complain about is like, once you get married, oh, now I have my laundry and your laundry. If if you're in a heterosexual marriage and you're the wife, it's like, oh, now the laundry that I have to do has doubled because housework is my responsibility. But I really don't get it. Like, of course, every family is unique. Every family is different. Divvy up the labor, however works for you and your family. But I see a lot of people where um, the the wife and the husband both work outside of the home. No one's a homemaker in the scenario. And even if they were, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are automatically responsible for all of the laundry or they should be. Okay, hear me out on that. But it's like a couple where two people work outside of the home and yet somehow all of the housework defaults to the wife. And I don't understand that. I don't get it. Maybe it's because in my marriage, it's it's different. Like, I'm responsible for my laundry. My husband is responsible for his. And we help each other out. Like we both fold each other's laundry. But it's it's not one person's sole responsibility just because one of us is a woman. And so if, if you and Jordan are both working and you don't have kids and you seem to have a lot of free time, I'm not sure why the role of doing all of the laundry is automatically defaulting to Brittany because now you're married. It doesn't have to be that way. Just a thought. Marriages or relationships or when I've said this before, I believe on this podcast, like they are when I'm more concerned about your welfare and your happiness than I am my own and yeah. vice versa. You're more concerned about mine. Mm-hmm. I think that's just, in, then, then you're, you guarantee that you're being looked after mm-hmm. and that, you know, the, your partner is, is looking out for you and your best interest and you don't have to worry about your own because you know, they've got it. Yeah. So I you think do that a really that's, good job at that. I try, you know, you do. I sometimes need the Lord checks me because sometimes I can still be selfish. And, um, I think we all can, you know, if we're being honest here. So <laughs> you winking at me over there. Mm-mm. Um, the next question in general, I think that's good advice. I will push back a little bit. When Jordan said, like, you don't have to worry about yourself because somebody else is, I do think that you should make sure that you're checking in with yourself. Am I good? Are my needs being met? Am I taking care of me and making sure, like, I'm I'm fulfilled, healthy, safe, like, I'm the best version of myself and I um, am doing what I need to be successful and, and reach my goals or be a healthy person, you know, whatever it is. I do think you should worry about yourself, but um, I agree that it is healthy to in a partnership, make sure that you are looking out for the other person's best interest and you are valuing them and making sure that they're okay and that their needs are met and, you know, it just engaging in checking in with them instead of always being concerned about yourself because you can't really be on a team if you only care about yourself. You got to check in on your partner. Okay, babe, this one is all you. Are you excited? Best way to shop for a gun and learn how to use it. It's the opposite. Oh, gosh. What do you mean? Well, you don't buy a gun and then learn how to use it. You learn how to use it and then you buy it. Mm-hmm. Go. If you are listening to this and you're in the market for a new firearm, find a local firearms instructor. Specifically seek out one that has multiple types of handguns for you to try to mm-hmm. shoot. Uh, find out what works best for you, what you like, what fits your hand 
ergonomically the best, learn some good um, firearm safety, handling, um, get a good basis, a good base layer down, and then go and purchase the firearm that you like the best. So many people go and buy a gun and then try to kind of figure out what they like after they already own a gun. And I think that's just, that's the wrong way to do it. Go, go and find out what you like and then go and get that gun. It's like the, uh, (laughs) when you first took me to shoot a gun years ago. That was ridiculous. So (laughs) I got like, I got like a smaller Glock for you to try. Which I liked. You did. She was fun to shoot. We kept it. We bought it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, It ended up actually being my gun for a while. Yeah. Um, But so I get a Glock 43X for you to try because I thought it would fit your hand well. Mm -hmm. And you shot it and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. Which you're a good shot. Thanks, babe. Um, I'm a good teacher. You didn't have any bad habits. You're easy to teach. So, which I'm not a good teacher. You're easy to teach because you had no bad habits. 43X, doing great. And then you go, I want to try your gun. I'm like, okay. So literally, what was I shooting at the time? Like a SIG. It was uh, a SIG, yeah. It was a SIG X5 Legion, something Mm -hmm. like that. Like a P320. The the bells and whistles on it. So super all, all tricked out, super expensive, like competition slash tactical gun. And you shoot that and you're like... I want this one. I and I'm like, like, I love this gun. I'm like, of course you do. And mind you, this gun is like almost three times the size of the one I was shooting. Yeah. Like it is not smaller. It is bigger. And I was like, I love this gun. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think there was even a, there was a range, like a range, I don't know what they're called. And the gun. A range, range officer. Us. And I remember him turning around and laughing. He was like, did she really just say that? And you go, yeah, yeah she it's did. Pretty par for the course. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you are a good teacher though, babe. Like you discount yourself. I, I mean, I feel fairly comfortable if I, if I had to, like if someone was breaking into the house and I was forced to protect myself, I feel very comfortable that yeah. I'm capable of that. Um, and I can only say that cause of you. So yeah. don't discount yourself. Well. I've actually been trying to convince Jordan to do women's handgun courses. So I don't know. If you guys would be interested in that, let us know. I don't know that he'll do it, but I've been telling him to. I think he would be really good at it. He's a great teacher. And I would get to say hi to people. I love hanging out. Oh, yeah. Making new friends. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, the next question. I want Jordan to become a weapons instructor and hold classes. And I'm going to sit in the front of the class too and say hi to people because I got to be there. What a weird idea of like, you should start doing this so that way I can be there and say hi to people. <laughs> That's so bizarre. But yeah, in general, um, I agree with what Jordan's saying. If you've never had a weapon before, it's good to get some hands-on experience with different types of them, go to a shooting range, go to a safety class, like learn the proper technique of not only how to shoot a gun, but how to carry it, how to store it safely, how to like load your magazine and make sure you know how to clean it properly and you know how to take care of it before you just buy a gun. Like it's good to educate yourself first. And so I'm with Jordan on that one. I I agree. Well, I think it's another question for me. Oh, Jordan, how can you talk to men about God without scaring them off with passion? Basically, she's asking like if it sounds like she's maybe in the dating scene. Mm-hmm. So how do you approach a man and get her and, and read on like how deep in his walk with the Lord he is without scaring him off? Well, I think you just get to know them on a, on a more of a friendship level. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, they're going to bear fruit one way or the other. Yeah. It's either going to be good fruit or bad fruit. Amen. Getting to know them, hanging out with them in, you know, a, um, more friendship based setting. Mm -hmm. You'll see what, how they act, how they treat others. Um, you know, before you ever have to take it down the romantic route, that's, that's kind of what I would say is you'll see the way, um, of course on a date, Mm -hmm. uh, on a first date or, you know, during that courting phase, they're going to be on their best behavior. 
Yeah. But if you can catch them off guard prior to that, yeah. during the friendship phase, you're going to see really how someone truly like, yeah, are they rude to waiters? Like, oh my gosh, that's my biggest. I hate ever. that. Like, it's yeah. not the waiter's fault. It's no. never the waiter's fault. And even if it is, they've got a lot going on. There's a million moving pieces in their day. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think like <sighs> that's another one where I am. With Jordan, I agree, and I'm assuming Brittany's going to back his idea up. Maybe she'll share a similar sentiment, but I would also just say, um, like, if your religion is important to you, which it typically is for people who actively practice their religion, and it's important to them to um, end up with someone who also takes the religion seriously, if you bring up God or you talk about how much your religion means to you or how passionate you are about it and they're not into it, then maybe your goals don't align. Like maybe, not even your goals, maybe um, it's not it's not a good match. Maybe you guys would not be compatible because you are very passionate about something and the person that you're interested in isn't and maybe that's going to be attention point. So I would say that you would probably want someone who was just as excited about God as you were. So if you scare them off, then hey, you know, you know that you guys don't have alignment in that particular area. And so it's probably better to know that sooner rather than later. From a girl's perspective, I know this was a question from for you, but like, we don't need, <laughs> how do I say this? On the first date, we don't need to be calling things demonic. Like it, it's, I mean, unless y'all are both on that same wavelength. Awesome. That is so cool. Yeah. But like, it, be honest, babe. If I would have sat down and yeah. told you all the things that I called demonic, demonic on our first date, you probably would have been like, well, no, like this yeah, girl's the, a little, a little passionate. A yeah. Little is, is, the fact that your coffee's bad. It's not demonic. It's not a demonic attack. Your barista is just having an off day. And that's okay. Yeah. There's grace. <laughs> yeah. No, it, seriously. That makes literally no sense. You're saying Brittany calls mundane things demonic and she doesn't need to do that on a first date? Like, that's what you're implying here, Jordan. But also, what I'm gathering from Brittany is like her saying, well, just because something might be demonic in your eyes, you probably shouldn't say it on a first date because that might be a little much for someone to take. But if you truly thought something was demonic and like it came up in conversation, you wouldn't be like, mm, I, I don't feel comfortable with this thing. Or I think like, I don't even know what she's thinking of calling demonic on a first date. I'm trying to brainstorm here. Brittany calls a lot of things demonic. And what I'm gathering from this is that maybe she's not sincere in her belief that those things are actually demonic because if you truly believed something was demonic, whether you were on a first date or not, you would express your aversion to it. That's all I'm going to say. Serious things that are demonic? Um, a lot, right? Like, sure. But you don't have to talk about that. You don't have to like go like 10 feet deep on the first date. Yeah, let's like, let's leave like the Benny Hinn like <laughs> to maybe the third or fourth date. Yeah. Like, yeah. Spiritual gifts, third date. Like, like there's, there's ways to seek out their depth level without having to, you know what I'm trying to say? Without yeah. having to like word vomit and be overzealous. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not ever shooting that down. Y'all know I'm on fire for the kingdom and I absolutely love the Lord and would lay my life down for him. But it's like, and, and do on a daily basis, but it's like, there's, there's a way to approach that on first date. Well, I'm just thinking back to my time as a police officer, the best way to find out like what you want to know about something mm -hmm. is to shut up and listen. Yeah. So ask questions. Yeah. Ask a ton of questions. Let him tell him, let him, yeah. let him tell you what he's passionate about, what drives him, mm -hmm. what ask pointed questions have. Mm -hmm. Have, you know, a couple of questions thought up in your head of like, and, and questions that could be so like such slam dunk volleyball, giant softballs mm -hmm. that they're right there for him to knock out of the park. If he does have a solid relationship with Christ, like you're leading the, it's a leading question. Yeah. It's like, and, where do you want to be in five years? Yeah. If he says married with a family pursuing the Lord, bingo. Yeah. 
there's there's a golden ticket right there if he's like oh i don't know like you know and he may be a i mean if the answer is like living in uganda teaching at a at like teaching kids english and on a mission Mm -hmm. (laughs) then you might want to check yourself because i don't know if you're maybe maybe you want to step up your game yeah um that's a pretty intense calling right there that's a very intense uh kelly and i were just talking about um kelly farron and i were just talking about mission trips the other day um yeah i think yeah like like we both said there's a way to deliver that and find that out without you know trying to push jesus down his throat so moving on what was the point of your conversation kelly and farron and you were all talking about mission trips the other day and what did you say like that added nothing to this answer it's the next one okay how to navigate the holidays and infertility together Mm. well um today was actually a pretty rough day and Hmm. I think it's hard. I don't, I don't even think it's hard. It is hard. You look around and you see everyone with their pregnancy announcements and, um, Christmas cards, you know, featuring their newborns or their new family. And you're so happy for them, but you're also crushed that that's not your season. And I think the first year, um, that we were married. Cause that was obviously like two months after our wedding. It wasn't like, I didn't really think anything of it. And then last year came around and I was like, okay, like this is a little harder because we had the miscarriage. And then this year just feels like a whole nother level of feeling crushed. Um, because, you know, after having miscarriage, it's been 14 months and, I think we can both, if we're being honest, say that we expected to be pregnant, not only pregnant, but also have a baby in our arms by now. Yeah. And so it's just really hard. Um, It's not easy, no matter which way you look at it. And so I think giving yourself the space to grieve and process with the Lord today was not a fun day for me. Um, Part of the reason why we're filming this at 10 p.m. is recording at 10 p.m. is because uh, cause it was a little bit of a rough day and I had to give myself the space to process and cry and get it out, um, with the Lord. And that's okay. Yeah. I don't really, I don't really know. I don't really have any advice. Um, cause we're still in the thick of it ourselves. Yeah. We're still learning how to, how to do that. I mean, I think from a husband's perspective or a man's perspective in the relationship or marriage with infertility around the holidays, like, mm-hmm you know, just being supportive and yeah. trying to do your best to understand. Yeah. Um, you're not going to understand. You're not mm-hmm. going to, and, and as a, as a man, it, you can't fix it. Yeah. Um, it's that question that we go back to, to premarital counseling. Like, do you want me to listen or do you want me to fix it? Yeah. And you can't, your only option here is to listen. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll report back cause I think we're still learning. We are, and we're also going to, I'm going to sit down and film a YouTube video over this because it has been about six-ish months since I feel like we've talked about this and um, like really talked about our Mm -hmm. our fertility journey. And um, we're kind of at a crossroads right now with some things that we're trying to make some, well, I mean, I guess ultimately life-changing decisions because they are. So Um, I will definitely sit down and do a YouTube video over that very soon. Moving on to the next question. (laughs) I've talked about this on my channel before, but I'll say it again because it remains true for me. I don't feel comfortable speaking on or commenting on someone else's potential infertility or their experience with miscarriage other than wishing them well and love and healing um, and sympathy for the loss that they've experienced. So I have no comment on that section of the video and we will move on to the next question. Why did Jordan get rid of his social media after we started dating? Well, good question. Two part answer. Mm -hmm. Um, First of all, my profession uh, discourages it. Mm even though I'm on yours a lot, it's yeah. not something that I, um, we'll just leave it that at that. 
Uh, need to go. This is a BS answer because when they got married, he was in medical sales. And now he's referring to my profession as in his supposed job in uh, the anti-sex trafficking world. So that's inconsistent there. The specifics as to what you do. Huh? We don't need to go into specifics yeah. as to what you so, do. So beyond that, you know what I noticed is, and we, you know, we would sit there and scroll through, you know, while well, you'd be on Instagram, I'd be on Instagram and you know, I, you, you see, you saw my page, you saw what I was mm-hmm. following. It was tactical companies, golf. gun companies and golf. And <laughs> even somehow, some way, I have no idea how they do this, but like still like scantily clad women would show up mm-hmm. and I'm like, what is the deal with this algorithm? And it was mm-hmm. just, I just didn't, I have I had no desire, desire yeah. for it. And oh, no, all I... of my, all of my family, all of my friends, for the most part, the people that are in my life on a day in day out basis, I don't need social media to keep up mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. We, we are, we are, we have intimate relationship where I know what's going That's such a BS explanation. That stuff shows up because you've looked at it and you've engaged with content like that before. I do not know the last time I saw a scantily clad woman just show up on my Instagram feed. You know what shows up on my Instagram feed? Religious stuff, baking stuff, cooking stuff, and cute babies. Because that's the kind of content that I engage with on Instagram. So that's what shows up for me. Jordan, these these images, these photos weren't just suggested to you at random. Come on, bud. And and Brittany, as somebody who works in social media, I know you know better. I know you know. And whatever. I'm not making a judgment on whether or not he should or should not have been looking at those images. I don't know exactly what they looked like or what the purposes of the posts were. I got no idea. But to be like, well, Instagram was pushing cleavage on me and so I had to leave. Not exactly believable. And Brittany knows how algorithms work. And so it's wild to me that she's letting him run with this narrative and that she's also supporting it going on in their life. They text me pictures of their children. Mm -hmm. They know what I'm doing. It's just, it just wasn't necessary. Yeah. Well, and like props to you. First of all, I get that because even still, I mean, Instagram is just sneaky. Like you think you have your algorithm figured out and then all of a sudden this random picture comes into your explore page or your feed and you're like, where did this even come from? Like it still happens to everyone. Um, and like, it's just so encouraging to know that, like, so in my past, a guy that I dated, um, Black Hawk Down, babe, that guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. We have named my exes war movies, really depressing, sad, chaotic war movies. Wow, what are all the ones? Patriot. Black Hawk Down, Tears of the Sun. Oh, Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan. That one's just real sad. That poor guy had never had a chance. Yeah. we got. We, I've got a Saving Private Ryan in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, And these were all guys that like were really bad to me. So they're not like, you know, I'm not just giving them names for no reason. Um, So anyways, Black Hawk Down guy one day just decided that I was like, I'm going to go through and see like who he's following on Instagram. Had been with this guy for like nine months at this point. And I go through and just it's a bunch of decided. like one day basically borderline porn accounts. And so later that day, politely and sweetly and kindly and gracefully, I was like, hey, like <laughs> I saw this and it, it kind of bothered me. Like, could you maybe like resolve this so that it, I'm not like it's really getting to my head. It's making me feel like I'm not good enough for you. Yeah. And before I knew it, I was being gaslit the situation was being flipped and manipulated back on me and I was being told I was a problem. And I was like, Oh, okay. (laughs) And so it's all of that to say, like, it's just so refreshing to be married to a man and ladies like take this as a learning lesson. Like the man that God has for you is going to recognize when something is threatening his relationship with you and he's going to cut it off. He's going to cut it off. He's not going to entertain it. He's not going to jeopardize your relationship with him because of something that he sees online, whether that's on social media or not on social media. Maybe it's on something else on 
you know, maybe he's watching porn. He's going to cut it off. Like, um, and so, yeah, I don't know. It was just. So Jordan seeing a scantily dressed woman on Instagram was a threat to your marriage. I, I don't, I feel like I don't need to say it again. Um, because if you're on social media, you understand this. Either it was a one-off of seeing photos of women just like every now and then and even with it occurring um, at that frequency, that sparse frequency, it was a threat to your marriage so Jordan had to go. What does that say about Jordan that he can't be on Instagram because every now and then he sees a photo that for some reason randomly just showed up on his feed that he had no interest in or that was his whole feed because that's the kind of content he's looking for and looking at on Instagram and he can't control himself. And so all he wants to see on Instagram and all that gets suggested to him and recommended to him on Instagram is posts like that. It's one of those two things. It's I love when you tell that that story because I'm just reminded of how sweet the Lord is that I don't know. It's just really cool to see how he yeah. cares about the details. Well, thank you, babe. Yeah. So moving right. on from Black Hawk Down. Yeah. Um, Black Hawk please. Down. Do you have any anxiety about bringing a child into the world with the way it is? No, I don't think so. I, I know we're not called to have fear. Yeah. The Bible says, do not fear 365 times, which is enough for one every day. One every day. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really see why. Now, I think it's also completely normal to feel anxiety sometimes or maybe um a little overwhelmed at the future and maybe if we're being honest worried but to straight up fear having a child because of the way that the world is i don't think that's what the lord has asked mm -hmm. us to do i think he's yeah. asked us to trust him and trust him even if we can't see what lies ahead well i think to the i think Fair. to like the you know bring a child into this world is, is what you make of it. Are you mm -hmm. going to, are you going to walk it out with that child and teach him right from wrong, teach him, you know, to be in the word, mm -hmm. to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Like it's all about what you, you know, what you do with that yeah. as a parent. Yeah. So I'm confident that we can bring that child into this world and lead them down the right path mm -hmm. of, you know, what's, what's true, what's right, what's just, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and yeah, and do a good job with that. I, um, as a, as a protector, sometimes I'm fearful, I say fearful, but sometimes I worry about, um, you know, what will happen later on in that child's life as, because things are going to get worse before the Lord comes back. And, um, I, you know, as a, as a protector, I don't want my children or my wife to live through that Yeah. without being shielded or protected. I hope I'm around to be able to, um, facilitate that yeah so that but that's that's probably male or husband specific mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah that's so good that's such a good standpoint or point of view oh um, my god i don't think worrying about safety is male specific or husband specific but i don't know i mean bringing a kid into the world is a really big decision and it comes with a lot of responsibility so yeah like i think those are all kind of like normal things to think about of you know, I, I have anxiety about the world and what I'm bringing a child into, but I also know that I like have to do my part to take care of my kid and teach them the values that I think are important for them to have. So that's a fair perspective for them to have. Gosh. All right, babe. How did this get in here? We're closing this out because the people want to know. I literally, I'm not kidding. I had like 10 people that, that I just saw. <laughs> this is because I was Melissa. joking, right? ask about this in my dms this I is because i i when you asked what i what i wanted to talk about on a q a mm -hmm. this okay go mm -hmm. ahead yeah so here we go all right it's super this is it's your, not as concerned this is your floor it's not as crazy <laughs> i haven't even asked the question yet. okay go ahead babe tell us all about ballistic coefficients <laughs> this is so silly so i'll keep it super oh, simple yes Ballistic coefficients are like the ability for a projectile or a bullet to overcome the resistance of, of like the air in flight huh? towards a target. 
You already lost me. <laughs> it it varies based off of the size, shape, and you know weight or aerodynamics of of a projectile. So like an airplane. No, I'm talking oh. about bullets. Oh. And because airplanes have a sustainable power source, an engine. Oh. And when, once a bullet is fired, it no longer has. It loses momentum. It loses momentum. And so it talks about like the obvious goal of shooting a bullet is to be as flat and as straight for as long as possible. Um, because then there's less, there's less variation on impact on that target. Well, yeah. Cause like if a bullet goes, if it goes up at all and it's going to slow naturally from like a physics perspective. So yeah. like if it's a straight line, it keeps. Yeah. And then spinning. we don't, we, we literally do not have time to talk about the curvature of the earth and how that plays into it. And also Thank goodness that does. Yeah. So are you not a flat earther? I wish I was a flat earther, but I don't even ballistic know coefficients tell me that I'm not a flat earther. Thanks. And so the whole thing about thing. optimizing ballistic coefficients is finding for what caliber you're shooting, what is the optimal um, size, shape, and weight of, of that projectile that comes out of that bullet. This is making my head hurt. <laughs> you lost me. That yeah. Aerodynamics. I'm like, wait, that's planes, right? And there's so, so let me blow your mind even more. Okay. There is actual um, mathematics that goes into this. There are equations that can help you figure out what? how to optimize ballistic coefficients based off of a multitude of things. And it's measured in pounds per square inch. So this isn't like girl math. No. Now that I've explained what girl math no, is. No, this is pretty, yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah, no. This isn't if I have, if I have nine eyelashes and I take, and I wear six of them, how many eyelashes do I have? Secondary That's question is, math, do either. I have enough eyelashes for complete sets? And the answer is you have three left after wearing six <laughs> and you need four. So no, you do not. <laughs> so like girl math. you're telling That's not me girl math. that when you were, and I'm not going to expose what you did, like, but when you were like doing your job and you're like up on a roof or you're in a building looking down wherever you're at. You have to think about all of this yeah, before I mean, it, you pull the trigger. Yeah. Oh, of course. In, in an urban environment, not as much. This is more of a long distance thing. Okay. Um, and, and it's really, it's like, it's a nerdy thing. Like guys nerd out over this. I mean, There's books about, about this. this. But it's also making my head hurt. It's you like guys study this and. I'm bored. You know, your military guys. Uh, are really good at this stuff. Um, it's just a, it's one of my nerdy things that, you know, this, so this is a perfect example. You know, that meme where the couple are lay, is laying in bed and they're facing opposite directions. And she's like, and the, and the girl is, and what does the girl say? He's thinking about another yeah. woman. Yeah. And I'm over here thinking about like, you know, air density and humidity and, how that is negatively affecting the bullet that came out of my gun at a certain distance. And should I change to a different grain of bullet to combat that, to this make a better shot? All makes so much sense because this is factual. I now understand why you are the way that you are because on days that like you go to the gun range, we have a gun range at my parents' ranch and it's like five acres. The days that you're up there, I bet that's what you're doing in bed when you're so quiet. You're picking apart your shooting that day. Yeah. Yeah, it of course. Trying to get, sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it and getting better and trying to make myself better. Huh. So do I need to learn ballistic coefficients? No. 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 Ballistic <laughs> coefficients really don't apply to handguns. Oh, these are like long range rifles. Yeah. And I don't okay. see you um, branching out of handgun. Amen. Yeah. Not I mean, we may get you an AR. We'll see. <laughs> Even then, you really don't have to worry about it. It's pretty standardized in that we're talking about different calibers of like long range hunting rifles and whatnot. This has gone on for way too long. Yeah, I think we've talked more about ballistic Amen. coefficients than we did anything else. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, hey, you're giving the people what they want. Giving people what they want. They yeah, wanted to know. I love this. I mean, honestly, I loved it. I've never heard you explain it before. I just kind of assumed it had to do with guns, but ballistic coefficients. 
Okay. I have to get you a soundboard. I want to talk to you about that soundboard. I know. We got to look one up. Let's wrap it up. I'm on Amazon. You're edit. I'm just, I'm just doing your editing team. I'm just taking it, you know, taking over for them. Taking it to the next level for them, man. All right. Well, babe. Ooh, like, you let me know when you want me to start your outro mu- or our outro music. That's like the fifth time I've yawned. You're going to start outro music? Well, I've got outro music. but Okay. Yeah. Well, not yet. We're going to say goodbye first. Yeah, go ahead contagious. and start saying goodbye. <laughs> um, actually, why don't you do the outro music now? No, go ahead. Okay. Well, that wraps up our final episode of 2023. I can't believe that we're already going into Christmas and the new year. I hope you guys have an amazing new year and I hope that you guys go in with... Are you playing it already? Keep going. With a new vision, new expectations. You're really throwing me off. (laughs) I can't keep going. (laughs) It's really not loud enough. That's more like it right there. That is my favorite song. It's so dramatic. You know what it makes me think of? Star Wars. Kind of. It's from a movie, but it's not Star Wars. Did you ever watch Star Wars as a kid? A little bit. Not as much as probably you did. I wanted to be Princess Leia. I used to make my mom do my hair like that. Tell the I'm done. Anyways, <laughs> Tell them Merry Christmas. We need to go to bed. I have to be up early for Hazel and Lane shoot. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for stopping in. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we will see you guys in 2024. Merry Christmas. Bye. Bye. If you'd like to learn more. No, I'm done. Okay. That was too much. I have no words left. If you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me. Let me know what you thought about everything that was said or any point that you want to discuss in the comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can leave it in the Q&A for this particular episode if you are listening on Spotify. And while you're doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel or leaving the podcast a rating or a review, that would be incredible. I do check the ratings every now and then. And before I had a 4.8 on Spotify and it got bumped up to a 4.9. So I'm pretty happy about that. If you would uh, keep adding to the positive reviews. I mean, if you if you have a negative review, that's fine. You can leave that too. But it is cool to see the, the rating go up. I'm like, oh, that's nice. It's a pleasant surprise. So thank you if you've left um, a rating um, on the podcast. I really appreciate it. If you've done any of those things, Thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you and I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.